What we have here is the new vintage USA LS kit, senders, and some uh, sealant. So we're going to go through in this video is how to use the LS kit or any uh, sender adapters for that matter to install in your engine. Uh, what we have here is oil pressure sender. That's a traditional oil pressure sender. You can use that or a transducer. A temperature sender uh, that's pretty standard. It's a eighth inch NPT pipe thread. That's industry standard. Same thing with the temperature sender. We have some uh, high temperature thread sealer. This is what we use. Do not use Teflon tape. There's a couple of reasons for that. Do not use this stuff here for your senders. This is fine for pipes and things like that in your house, but for senders, what that's going to do is it degrades and you know, exposed to the chemicals, and it also, the thickness of it, can block the sender from grounding properly, which can lead to improper readings. We see that quite a bit, so we usually recommend using the thread sealer. Uh, this is the Permatex brand. This works good. This is easy to find. It's just a few bucks. Uh, so here is our LS kit. What this contains is it contains an instruction sheet that tells you how to use the pull-up resistor. Uh, you'll need this if you're using a GM computer. Uh, we have full instructions on that, how to hook that up. Uh, this is the M12 um, bushing with the flat washer. So these, most senders are what's called pipe thread. What that means is it's not a straight thread. This is actually has a taper on it. And as it tightens, it gets tighter. Uh, and actually the seal gets better and better as it tightens, you know, just like a traditional house pipe. Same thing on the temperature sender as well. Same type of, of fitting. These are straight threads on both of these, and these are also metric. So these, this one is M12, this is an M16. So what that means is when they tighten, they tighten the same all the way down, and then the actual, the washer is what performs the sealing function. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over how to, how to use these. Uh, it's really pretty easy. Both the temperature and pressure sender um, now, what happens a lot of times on these and on standard bushings is what will happen is the installer will, and these even come with little caps, what will happen is the installer will put this in the block and then put the sender in and then put the sender in. What that will what do is uh, because there's an, uh, an adaption here, so there's a, a, a thinner portion of this. Uh, bushing what that can happen is you can actually break this so the way to do this when it comes to whether it's a metric or a standard connection is what we would recommend is putting the sender in first so we're going to put the sender in we're going to tighten it down we're gonna, well we'll put some thread sealer on there then once this is ready to go this is because this has to be a tighter connection here than here to the block so then once this is connected then we'll put on our washer We'll put on our washer and install that in the, the head or the block or wherever it goes. That And we'll tighten it from here. That way uh, we won't damage the actual uh, uh, adapter. Because this once this breaks off, you can get it out. It's kind of a pain though. So let's let's just go over techniques on how to install some, uh, some thread sealant. Now on all the pipe thread, all the pipe thread units, what we recommend is leave a, a couple threads without anything on there because what that'll do is that'll guarantee see most of these senders except for transducers um excuse me is they actually uh work through the ground of the vehicle so if you leave a couple threads um without any sealant on there what that'll do is that'll make sure that you have a a really good connection to the ground so i'm just going to put a little bit on here in a couple spots And then we're going to, oh, I got a little on the bottom, but that's okay. I'm going to try and hit the, the center of the, the, the threads. Because this will not go in all the way. It'll only go into a certain point. Okay, so that looks pretty good. This is our temperature center. This is going to go into the uh, head of the, the LS. We're just going to get this started. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my vise. Um, I've got some cardboard on here to prevent this from being damaged. You don't really have to do that. Sometimes I just do that to be a little bit fancy. So I'm going to put this in here. Uh, 
Um, just for simplicity, I'm just going to use an adjustable wrench. You can use uh, the proper size wrench if you'd like. Actually, I have a bunch right over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this up. We don't want to really, you know, we want to get it tight, but we're not talking about like to where it's going to break. So once you start to feel the real resistance start, we're going to go about another quarter turn. That's good. So now we have, and you can see the sender is not always, whoop, sorry. Now you can see that the sender is not going to go all the way in because like I said, this thread inside here is tapered, gets wider at the top. So it'll only go to a certain point. So don't try and bottom this out because it'll never bottom out. Um, and that's what creates the seal. So we've got, um, you can see our, our sealant in there. Looks pretty good. We had a little bit come up. So that means that all the threads are full. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use our washer. We're going to put our flat washer on there. We're going to put a little bit of sealant on there. And then we're going to put it in the head the next step. Now we're going to do the same step for the oil pressure sender exactly same process we're going to put that in here tighten it down and then we'll show you where that goes now it's time to tackle the senders let's start with the oil pressure sender the oil pressure sender is located right back here on the back of the block uh, just like a small block Chevy so it's right back here and we'll show you that in some pictures uh, and installation uh, step by step but it's right back here. What you want to do is you want to spend the $10 and just get the tool. This will save you a bunch of pain. Um, if it's out of the engine, it's a piece of cake, but this, see the thing is, the, here's the stock LS sender. I think it's one and a 16th inch nut. However, if you look closely, it's got rounded corners on it, so it makes it a little bit hard to get a wrench on, especially down in there. This tool also has the rounded corners on it. It's a deep well. This will save you quite a bit of pain. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this with our oil pressure sender. And we've already got our, our pressure sender installed to the LS kit. And when we install it, we're going to use a wrench and turn on this part. That way we're bottoming, we're going to put our sealant on, we're going to put our, uh, our gasket on, we're going to drop it in, and we're going to tighten it by this. Not by this or by this, because we don't want to damage this connection here. So we'll plop that in, hook that up. Now then we'll move on to temperature senders. All GM, actually most heads, uh, for all V8 and V6 engines typically are, they're not mirror images, but it's the same part, but flipped 180. So on a lot of, on all the LSs, there is a, on the uh, driver's side right here, there is a uh, temperature sender. You can use that for your gauge or for your computer. Typically you need one for the computer because the computer needs to know the engine temperature to adjust the air fuel ratio and then we need one for the gauge. And the reason why we need an oil pressure sender and a temperature sender is we wanna have the gauges be a standalone apart from the computer, that way you know exactly what your engine's seeing. Um, that way in case there's a problem with the original sender or the ECM, your gauges are your in, uh, insurance to make sure that your engine is safe. That's what gauges are all about. They look cool, but really they're all about insurance. So what we're going to do is we're, we're running a Holley Terminator X on this engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to retain this temperature sender to run the Holley. And then on the other side, the mirrored side, I'll show you in a second, is where we'll run the, uh, the temp sender for the gauges. One other thing we wanted to demonstrate on this is, I know it's going to be kind of hard to see, but down there, see that oil pressure sender down there? Let me see if I can get a better shot. Down there, there is a billet adapter down there on the side of the, of the oil filter assembly. And we've installed a, uh, installed a pressure sender there. And the reason why we've done that is we just wanted to show you an alternative to 
this guy. Let's see if we can get down in there. Let's see if we can get a light in there. So you can see the cam sensors back here. Let me get the lights in there. Got the cam sensor. Sorry, I can't see if this is full. There we go. Got the cam sensor and then the pressure sender. Uh, so there you go. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to leave that pressure sender in place because we're running that to our Holly Terminator. Now the computer has no reason to read oil oil pressure, so it's not required. So you could just leave, you could install your oil pressure sender there, or you can install that for your Holly or your PCM. But there aren't any PCMs on the market that require an oil pressure sender. So there's really no reason to have it unless you just want redundancy in your efforts. Over here. We'll show you. Okay, now we're on the passenger side. You can see at the back of the head is the temperature, is where a temperature sender would normally be. There's a, a, a plug in there from the factory. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that. And we're going to put our uh, new gauge temperature sender in there. And again, it's just the, the other head flipped 180 degrees, so it's the same casting. On most V8 engines, even V6 engines, that's the, that's the typical layout. Usually there's one at the front, one in the back. It may vary from vehicle to vehicle, side to side, um, but they're usually mirror images. So you can run two temperature senders if you want. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove that plug. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little pick tool, you know, one of these little guys here, and I'm just gonna get some of the dirt out of there. Hit it with a little cleaner. That's tough to get to. It's a little tough to get to while shooting a video. Just gonna spray in there. That way, when we use our socket. So this is, oops, this is a uh, eight millimeter hex. So that's what we're going to use to remove it. Hopefully it's not stuck. And we want to get the, all the debris out of there because we want this to sit in there really tight. Oh, there we go. So that way we don't have any problems getting it out. I want to make sure all the debris is out of there. There we go. So we do not want to strip this out. Next thing you know, we'll be messing around with vice grips and easy outs and all that kind of stuff. I can see there's a bunch of sealer in there already. Now, when you take this out, don't be alarmed. You'll lose a little bit of coolant. So have a little tray under there. You can always top it off later. Now, before I take that out, I'm gonna grab a towel. So we're gonna lose a little bit of coolant. Like I said, we can always top it off later. I'm gonna clean off that, the face of that, because this is going to have, this has the gasket on there, so I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and flat. If I move relatively quickly, I won't lose too much coolant.
I'm going to use a uh, socket or a wrench. I'm going to install it using this nut, not, not the sender itself. I'm going to be using this socket on the bushing itself, not the actual sender. That way we won't break it off. So I've got my sealant on there and a little bit of coolant we lost. Cup or two. It's just what's in this head. It's not the whole system. Once we start to be up to level, we'll check the coolant level. Sometimes none comes out. It's kind of weird. I guess it depends on the angle of the vehicle, how much is in there, things like that. But as long as your overflow tank is full, it, it'll refill itself and you can just fill it up from there. Okay, so now I can see that the, the sender is now flush. The bushing, or the, the sender's flush, the washer is flush. I'm just going to snug it up a little bit. That should be good. Then we'll run our wires, run them into the cab. That'll be the next step. Then we'll move on to the actual gauges. Got our wire, our sender wires hooked up. So what we do, we just crimped it on, attach it to our temp sender. What I'd like to try and do is I like to try and use the same color wire running into the engine compartment as into that's on the wiring harness, if that's possible, just makes it easier. And then we uh, ran, sorry about the sun. And there's that guy down there. Now, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of slack right here, because the engine is going to move a little bit. And I've seen a lot of people who they'll start the vehicle, bad motor mount, it'll have a lot of engine movement, and they'll pull the wire off, so we don't want to do that. And then I just ran the wires along, uh, whoops, sorry about the sun, along the loom that it's going to go get inserted to. The reason why I did that is I just want to make sure everything's working, good to go. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, tuck it in the loom when we're done, and I found an existing hole to install it into. Now let's take a look underneath, I'll show you the, the pressure sender. that we've installed in the alternate location. Oh, there you go. Let's see if we can get that down to focus, there you go. So there's that installed in the alternate location. Let's get a better look here. There you go, that's a better look. So we've just ran the wire, kept away from the headers. Uh, there you can see the little adapter we used and that's a real easy way to install that as well. And then we also give that a little bit of slack to make sure that um, we don't have any issues with any engine movement. 